Live on YouTube. Got it? Can you see it? Oh, yes. You can see my screen. Yep. It says live. Okay. No, it's oh, it does say. Okay, so that means we're live. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, yes. Can you see my screen? Yep. It says live. No, it's oh, it does say. Okay, so that means we're live. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Okay. All right, Charlie, can you hear me? I can hear you, but it sounds like a delay. Delay type yeah. of... Uh, yeah, because you, you're actually watching on YouTube. No, I'm on Zoom. Okay, because I what you got to do is go, go... On my YouTube, I just said turn the sound off because the YouTube yeah. is lagging. No, but I'm, I'm on... I'm, I'm on uh, you know that the small mini screen on top of the Zoom? You're on a big screen for me. Yeah, and there's a small mini screen that I'm looking at myself, and right above that it says live on YouTube. Yeah, we're live. That's for sure. Uh -huh, we're live on YouTube. Um, I'm not sure how this thing works, but we we, we will find out. <laughs> Well, as they say, the show must go on. The show must go on. Hang on, I'm trying to. Um... Okay, if you guys, if you guys are watching this, I apologize. I I don't even know. This is the first time I'm trying to do it to um, to Facebook Live. I mean, to you to YouTube Live. So I'm actually, um, I'm gonna need Patsy's help here. Why? Should I go? Should I go to um? I go to uh, YouTube. Whereas we are trying to fix this technical difficulty. Just in case, just in case somebody is uh, watching. Yeah. So you, you have the floor. Why okay. You... Aloha. Uh, we have a little technical difficulty that has stymied our ability to to come to you live via Facebook. So we went over to YouTube. And the last resort, if this does not work, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to jump over to Tire Tube. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm Uncle Charlie, and uh, Uncle Mel is the host of all of this. So we need to get his side handled first. But what we wanted to talk about was a lot of the things that surround COVID-19. Uh, we want to talk about the small business loans that uh, was announced for the people in Hawaii that has small businesses and how you can get access to funding to assist you. We also want to talk about some of the new implementation of rules that uh, affects us here in Hawaii. And uh, we'll cover a lot of other things. And as you can tell, I'm just winging it while I'm waiting for, for Mel. But me personally, I like to cover the security aspects of the implementation of all the different programs here in Hawaii regarding to uh, travelers coming from outside. Uh, the program that's been implemented by the state is one of not an absolute, but a to discourage a traveler from coming here. But when you have marketing that is giving deals that you'll never ever find it, just short of giving away everything for free. And with Hawaii having the lowest numbers right now, throughout the entire U.S. as far as infected uh, individuals affected by COVID. You know, it kind of makes it tempting. The only thing is you run the risk of, if you want to come here, you have to quarantine for 14 days on an honor system because that's not a hidden secret. But I, I want everybody, you know, if you're watching, I want everybody to know that we take this seriously. So the Hawaii Tourism Authority has implemented a check and balance to keep track of you 
while you're on our beautiful island. If there's any of you out there watching, uh, my understanding is there's an implementation. I believe it goes into effect next Wednesday, next week, Wednesday, regarding inter-island travel. Now, some of you may say, whoa, what the heck? These measures need to be taken because we can see how the oh. spread is occurring now. And when the numbers are rising the way it is on the island of Oahu, if people travel to Oahu to any of the other islands that has a, a lower number, but there's a possibility that a spread could happen, we have to be mindful of, of contaminating, of not wanting to contaminate that community. So it's getting to the point that inner island travel has to, you have to have quarantine in place okay so that is something that all of you have to be mindful of i understand that a lot of people travel say to honolulu for medical reasons uh, or travel to another island because uh, there's no available center for dialysis that type of thing yes but if you're in an environment where you already have a compromised illness i mean uh, illness that is compromised by your 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 body is compromised or your ability your immune system is compromised i i would be assuming that you're under some type of quarantine now so it kind of kind of mixes over and i don't think that would be an inconvenience hopefully but other than that ladies and gentlemen charles, uh, charles you get charles so hang on hang on hang on okay i've been told to hang on no, I don't think we're on. I mean, in fact, I know we're not on, so. Well, I get here live on YouTube. Yeah, I know, but it's not. I'm, I went to the page and there's absolutely nothing there, so. Okay, well, I'm going to take back what I said. <laughs> um, oh, no, I'm sorry. You are on. You are on. Oh, sorry. I'll go, I'll go for it again. Yep. Hello, ladies Give and gentlemen. It's on. <laughs> Hello, Hondo. How are you doing, Brother Mel? I'm doing well. I'm do I just went back to my Facebook, I mean, my YouTube page, page and there's 13 people watching, so. Okay. Um, well. So I guess it is working. Right. Uh, Mel on the left. And we're known as a Mel and Charlie. What do you want to call it? So Mel and Charlie informational outlet coming to you live tonight from our respective homes because we're recognizing social distancing and we're taking it to a whole new level. We're distancing by oh. miles. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, Charlie. Yeah. Here it yes. is. Okay. You know, we, we cut a hey, brother, we kind of flat, but I understand we're trying to flatten the curve, yeah. Yeah, apparently, they ain't listening to us. You know, we've been talking for a while, yeah, about washing your hands, staying home, you know, all of that stuff. I mean, you know, Charlie, we've been talking, we've been uh screaming for a while, yes, about, yes, yes, and nobody's not, I shouldn't say nobody's listening. There's a huge chunk of people that are listening, but there's a, another chunk of people that ain't listening. So, you know, um, I don't know what more to do. That's why I think the flattening the curve with our music would probably be. Yes. Yeah. Hi -ya, hi -ya, hi -ya. Anyway, boy, oh boy. first of all, I want to apologize. I don't know what the heck. Uh, Zoom connects with Facebook, but it wouldn't do it tonight. It's. It comes up with an error screen said sorry we're, facebook is having some problems we're working on it so we hope that they will uh fix it uh this is the first time i'm trying to this do this live uh, zoom to youtube so we'll go ahead and go through with the the the, the, the session and then we'll you know we'll put this back on uh on on facebook so everybody can can watch at a later time but i do appreciate those of you that are on tonight let me see how many people we get on there right now we get 13 people watching. Um, 
So awesome. Thank you guys. And we'll Thank basically, you. yeah, Thank yeah. You. Appreciate you guys patience again, live and learn, live and learn. I, I think we figured this thing out. It's just getting people. It's a lot more complicated to get onto YouTube. You know, Facebook is such an amazing platform that, you know, we can really get the message out. So, um, just a couple of things we wanted to talk about tonight. Um, in addition to, see, we're going to do this every night. Charlie and I are going to come out every night to pound into you folks the importance of staying home. I know a couple of guys today uh, posting, you know, you don't have to stay home. You can go out and exercise. And we're not talking about going out and walking around the block or walking your dog. We're talking about gallivanting. We're talking about going out for no essential purpose. Going out for the sake of going out, going to the shop, the, going to the store because you can, not because you need to go buy supplies. So uh, we really got to curb this stuff. I think, you know, don't let the numbers fool you. Yeah, we're doing really well uh, as far as the numbers, especially here on Kauai. Uh, and it tells me that a lot of people are adhering to the rules. But as you are, uh, we're hearing from a lot of people. Charlie, you had to come into Louis today. Uh, yeah. A lot of cars on the road, a lot of people on the road. Uh, so uh, I, well, you know, brother, it, it's 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 upsetting to think that you know we're we're at a time that, and you know, I'm part of my French, but serious shit is happening, you know, and uh, to be passing a car, four individuals blasting the stereo, giving you the shaka sign, and they're wandering aimlessly like they have nowhere to go but just go holo holo. I, I'm just afraid when they get to their destination, if they're gonna come in contact with people. Now, granted, we may be at an age where we, in, where paranoia sets in, but you know what? The message came out from the government. And right after that, they threw the message of numbers, right? They threw the message of Italy. They started to throw message. So of course, everybody will get paranoid. So we see, you know, we don't have to, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that right now, Hawaii, we started off with a real tiny number. And you look at the number today, 100, almost 200, right? Or over 200, something like over that. Over 200. I don't know. Right? Over 200. Yeah. So you, you got the numbers already growing sideways. And that's something, Mel, you and I talked about the spread, how it's going sideways. So we said, hey, come on, Governor, you got you to gotta close off, close off the airports. Well, we were told why we can't do that. So, okay, put in the next best thing, quarantine. But then... We know that the quarantine process has to have more bite to it because we're talking about constant monitoring. Your objective is if a person comes into the state that may or may not have the, the virus, until such time that ugly thing rears its head, we don't know. So you have to attach yourself to that individual and make sure that the individual just doesn't go walking around and infecting everybody, right? Exactly. And, that's, and that's the whole point. And then that's what we're seeing. We're saying we're hearing from a lot of people that they're they're seeing parties in garages. Um, you know, 10, 12, 14 people in one garage drinking beer. That's the kinds of things that create the numbers to jump exponentially. And I know a lot of people figure it's not going to happen to them. And it might not, but it may happen to someone that you love or you care for. And that is what I don't get. I just don't get it. Um, you know, two to three weeks. Two to three weeks, we lock down, stay in your house, go out only when you need to, and we can get to the other side of this curve. And, and the longer we take to, to listen, the longer it's going to take to get to the other side of the curve. And the more people are at risk of uh, getting sick and possibly even dying. So, I mean, come on, people. Just, you know, you don't even have to go down the rules. Just, you understand, don't go out unless you have to. And if you go out because you have to, make sure you be very safe. You stay at six feet, minimum six feet. Make sure you wash your hands. Don't touch your face. You, you guys know this. It's, it's been pounded. And we're going to do this every night just so that you guys understand. Because apparently yeah. some of you are not. So Well, you know, the, the, the spooky thing about it, I don't know if you saw the report that came out, Brother Mill. But now, remember they said when it first came out, that they worry about the droplets. That's why it was, and I don't know how they figured that number out, but they say that a six foot difference, a distance, I'm sorry, would, if somebody were to send that, those droplets out, it would, by gravity, it would fall to earth within six feet, right? 
Now they're talking about this possibly could be airborne. Oh boy. Now we got a whole new set of variables to deal with and a whole, you know, I always thought that it was airborne only because a large section in Europe got attacked one time. You can't just uh, uh, cough on the ground and a couple thousand people can walk over the same ground and all get infected. No, it doesn't happen that way. Unless, you know, you, 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 you put, you put lava on both sides and you make on corridor that they got to walk and then walk through an infected corridor. That's the only way I think it would happen. So I think, you know, yeah. there could be some, some truth to this airborne, airborne thing. Well, I mean, remember when it first came out, you know, the vulnerable people were old people and people that had underlying medical conditions. They were finding out now a lot of young people are getting yeah. really, really sick. You know, in fact, two people in Hawaii are on ventilators. Two people in Hawaii are young, 37. And I believe, I, I'm not sure how old the second one is, but uh, not much younger than I, you know, probably early 50s uh, or late 40s, somewhere around there. Two of them young on ventilators. So that was a myth. Again, I think when they, and they're when the relatively, they were relatively, they were good health. Big, yeah, good were, health, yeah. good, healthy that people. So it's it's uh so you know people just come on common sense you know common sense uh it's not rocket science just do not expose yourself or others i don't know how else or how more you can you know you can say it but i did want to cover a couple of programs that that are out there right now and it, it's very important if you have a small business here on Kauai or wherever you are watching this and again i appreciate i, I don't know how many people we have let me check how many people we have watching actually live uh we have uh 32 now so we're growing Ooh. this is a new platform <laughs> yeah this is a Ooh. new platform for us we usually go straight to facebook live it's it ain't working tonight so we're gonna do it on youtube first time oh, can i can i can i this do this video really, will go, can huh? i do this real quickly we got 32 yeah. okay 32 32 33 33 32 yeah 35 35 35 uh, i don't know i cannot tell by this thing but <laughs> but I uh, will put this back on Facebook Live as soon as we're done. We'll, we'll I'll put it on Facebook. I mean on Facebook. So, but a couple of things, real real quick. Um, economic injury disaster advance loan. This is uh, available for businesses under 500 employees. That, that that's pretty much all of our small businesses here on Kauai. Um, loan advances of ten thousand dollars. Now, if you qualify, and I, I'm not going to go into the the requirements and all of that. You go to sba.gov. SBA for small business administration.gov. Right on the top, you're going to see a mustard color banner that has the um, economic injury disaster uh, advanced loan. Basically, this is the deal. If you are struggling, I mean, just read it. In response to the coronavirus pandemic, small business owners in all US states, DC, and territories are eligible to apply for an economic injury disaster loan uh, advance of up to $10,000. This advance will provide economic relief for businesses that are currently experiencing a temporary loss of revenue. Temporary loss of revenue. Funds will be made available within three days of a successful application. And the best part, the loan advance will not have to be repaid. So there are requirements. Not every, not every business is gonna, is gonna qualify. An application takes about two hours, but it's 5,000 bucks an hour. And if, and if you qualify, you don't have to pay the money back. This is basically for those businesses that are temporarily, in other words, if you're shutting down or if you've closed down and you have no intention of starting up again, you're not gonna get the money. You can go get a loan, you ain't gonna get this advance. If you're struggling restaurant, uh, small business, and the COVID crisis has, has forced you to lay people off, uh, and, and it's really only temporary for this for this next however long it's going to take. Then you qualify and you can get this ten thousand. You don't have to pay it back. So rent, electricity, uh, in some cases maybe some uh, maybe you're running a skeleton crew. Whatever the case may be, go to sba.gov, sba.gov, do your application tonight. There's limited yes. funds. Yes. Go get it done. Two hours. I do it for ten grand that you don't have to pay back. So hopefully that will help some of our small businesses. Again, sba.gov, G-O-V. It's called the Economic Injury Disaster Advanced Loan. They have many different uh, products and services for small business. They got loans up to 2 million, uh, whatever. You're looking for the Economic Industry Disaster Advanced Loan. It's an advance. They're calling it a loan because if you don't tell them, uh, 
or if you don't do what they, you tell them you're going to do, then you're going to get. Then it's going to be a loan. But if you if you comply and you qualify, it's you don't have to pay it back. The second yeah, that's, thing, uh, that no, that's, go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, SBA. You know, it's important. Make sure you drill that into your heads, uh, small businesses. If you can't remember, use the acronym of SBA. The acronym. Let's remember: sushi, burgers, and artichokes. Okay, <laughs> sushi, burgers, artichokes. Dot golf. There you go. Uh, you know, Charlie, you just yeah. I love you, man. So again, man, ten thousand dollars. It'll carry you over until you know. And and uh, we don't know when this thing is going to end. I mean, we're looking several months, but uh, take advantage of the SBA. Really, take advantage yes. of the SBA. Yes. The other program right now, many of you out there have four hundred one ks. You know, if you're less than fifty nine and a half, if you withdraw, you get one huge penalty and and then and, and taxes. Well, for a limited time. They don't tell me how limited, but it's for limited. Americans were able to withdraw money from tax deferred accounts without penalty under the stimulus package signed into law Friday by President Trump. Rules on 401k loans will be relaxed and some retirees can avoid so-called uh, RMDs, the required minimum distributions um, that have become really crazy. So anyway, if you have a 401k, some of you have a 401k that you have uh, a provision for borrowing. So you can go out and borrow against your 401k, you really don't want to spend down your 401k, especially with the market, because most 401ks took a hit. So maybe a loan is, is, uh, is probably better. But for those of you that do not have a loan provision on your 401k, you can withdraw. So if you got expenses, if you got to pay your mortgage, or if you got to pay uh, whatever it is that you need to, expenses you need to pay, um, you can withdraw right now without the penalty, even if you're under 59 and a half. So again, sba.gov, the 401k program, just call your 401k provider. This, this is the, uh, that's the federal law. So they will all know about it. You just, you can withdraw whatever you can or whatever you want, and there will be no penalty. So two programs that um, right now instantly can help you folks um, that are, are, are in a financial bind. I know many of us are, many of us are. So. Uh, please, please, please take advantage if you can. Take advantage if you can. SBA.gov and then call your 401k provider if, in fact, you want to uh, withdraw from your 401k without getting the penalty. How's that? Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, please yeah. don't ask me to repeat that because I didn't understand a damn word you said, but man. I'm excited. I don't, you know, yes. I don't have a small yes. business anymore, but I can tell you if I did. I'd be applying for that tonight. I would be going yeah. online tonight, two hours of my time to get $10,000 to carry me over on some of the expenses that, that, uh, that you're gonna be incurring uh, with, with a, because of the loss of revenue because of this virus, uh, absolutely. Now, the and, other and, thing- and, and, Brother Mel, yeah, okay. also, let, let, let the viewers know, those who, people chiming in that can see this, now's not the time to be prideful. Now is not the time to be prideful. Put the pride aside, ask for help. Okay, that's what it's there for. You know, a lot of times people, they get so much pride, they don't ask for help. They go in a hole, Allah, being banged. They cannot get out. They're hurt. Now's the time that when these programs are made available, please go and take advantage. It's there for you. Okay, it's there for you. All the, all the taxes you paid over a period of time into, you know, all these different taxes as a, as a business owner, Hey, they're giving you relief. We'll take some of that back to help you. Please, please do that. I urge you. They're giving you this relief because they know that we, this country has really come to a stop uh, economically. Uh, you know, most people are not working. Most people are staying at home. Companies are, are on the brink of, of closing down. Many have already closed down. This package is there to to allow people to hang on for a little while. People say 10,000, that's not much. Well, uh, it, is, it isn't much, but if that'll carry you over for the next couple of months uh, until the, the economy starts to come back or they offer more stimulus. You know, a lot of people saying, you know, we're going into debt, more debt to, to help the, the corporate America. Well, you know, 70% of small business or 70% of businesses are small business. It's not the big corporate giants. And, we, we got to take care of the small businesses. So I applaud 
the, our federal government, our delegation, our, our administration up at, the, at, the, at Washington, D.C., I, I applaud them for putting our small businesses on the forefront because I, we all know, Charlie, I know you know, uh, yep. you work at Collie Hill Steakhouse. Uh, I, I, we all know Smiley's. We know so many small business owners um, that the revenue has just shrunk. In fact, Collie Hill Steakhouse, probably, did they close? Did they, nope. did they close temporarily? They're still open? So yep, they obviously yep. as, the, as, as the revenue shrinks, the bills don't shrink. The electricity isn't based on how many dinners you sell. Your rent isn't based on how many dinners you sell. So this is, this is why these uh, stimulus packages are being passed so that we, as small business owners, as, as people, you know, we, we get the tax uh, or the $1,200 or $2,400 coming shortly to keep people surviving. And that's what, it, like Charlie said, it's not a time to be ashamed. It's there for us for a purpose and let's take advantage of it. So, yes. Awesome. 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 You guys get any questions on this, shoot me a message uh, in Messenger uh, and I'll make sure I get the information to you. The other thing, Charles, Charles, yes, sir. Charles. Yes, sir. Charles don't know about this, but um, a lot of people have a lot of questions. And I know you, Charlie, and myself have been receiving, I, I, I'm not lying, I'm not exaggerating. I have hundreds of messages or comments or text messages per day coming in with questions about things. Um, and I try to answer as much as I can. I try to research as much as I can. But a lot of people are calling 241-1711, which is our Kauai police non-emergency number. They're calling KPD to ask about what's essential and not essential. They're asking KPD questions about, can they leave the house to go pay a bill? What Kauai police department did was got together with the dispatchers and found out what, what were the most questions being asked on the police line, on the non-emergency police line. And they compiled a document, which is going to, I was just made available today, just this afternoon. It came out on the press release. So it's gonna be out, I'm assuming by tomorrow. But these are the common questions that people are asking. Um, and they're asking the police, please don't call KPD unless it's an emergency. Uh, if you need to report something. If you have a question, call the county, uh, call the mayor's office. Somebody's at the mayor's office that can take the call, but please do not tie up our dispatchers um, by asking a question about walking your dog or, and, and these are questions. So Charlie, what I'm gonna do, we're gonna have some fun tonight. Okay. Because Charlie hasn't seen these questions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask the question and Charlie's okay. gonna try and answer. Okay. And if I get, and if I get the wrong answer, I, I, you know, I don't get one of these. Okay, yep. there you go. Okay, here we go. First okay. question. Yes. Now, okay, these are quest actual questions. Actually, these are the common questions that are being asked of our Kauai police dispatchers. Okay. Okay, number one, can I go out and pay my utility bill? Yes. If you are not able to pay for your utility bills electronically, and as long as you practice social distancing and avoid going out, if, if you're feeling sick, you can. Bottom line, on all of these, if you're sick, stay home. If you cannot pay your electric bill or gas bill online, you can go and pay your bill. Can you go to the bank and pay your car loan? Yes. If you are not able to pay your car loan electronically, can I travel to my place of business to pick up my paycheck? Yes, if you don't have direct payroll deposit, because I would assume most companies have direct payroll. Is that on there by any chance? No? Yes, if you do not have direct deposit, you may travel <laughs> to your workplace to get, so you're on a roll, three for three, Charles. <laughs> um, and not everybody has direct deposit. So yes, if you if you don't have direct deposit, let your accounting payroll people know, get connected so you don't have to go pick up your check. Okay, that's as it that's the paying bill section. Next one, recreation. This one is interesting and good Ooh. fun too. Ooh. Can I go to a county park to exercise and run around the field? I say yes, as long as you practice social distancing. And if you go to the field and you walk around the field, that you abide by the rules and walk in the same direction. Because you walk opposite, 
You can pass each other within six feet. No, you all got to walk the same way. <laughs> you can go to a county park to exercise and run as long as you practice social distancing <laughs> and participating in a solo outdoor activity, people. Yes. Um, or in a small group with proper social distancing, such as running, walking, surfing, swimming, no team sports, no soccer, no basketball, no football, no baseball is allowed. No, this is critical here because I see this and I'm hearing the complaints. No sunbathing or picnics at parks and beaches are allowed at this time. No sunbathing or picnics at parks and beaches allowed at this time. Okay. Can I walk my dog near the beach? Yes. And I say that because it's an exercise. But when you walk your dog, just remember, you need to listen to your dog. <laughs> <laughs> and obey all the leash laws and practice social distancing. Make sure you're six feet away yes. from the dog. Just kidding. Yes. Not the dog. Anybody else. Do not leave your house if you're feeling ill again. All of these are the same, but you can walk your dog. Remember, dogs not allowed on beaches in Hawaii. So if you want to take your dog along the beach, uh, you can go near the beach. You cannot go on the beach, okay? Dogs not allowed. Anyway, obey all leash laws. Okay, I have a permit for the beach. Can I go even though there is a stay-at-home order and road checkpoints? My answer to that, just <laughs> by that question, is... I don't think residents need a permit to go to the beach. So it sounds like a, 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 a tourist question. I'm assuming. A am I correct? I'm assuming, no? I'm assuming the yeah. same thing. Okay. Um, so, because... You cannot... Remember, again, this same rule applies. You cannot sunbathe or picnic at a beach or park. You must be engaging in solo exercising or exercise that involves good social distancing. Again, the walking, the running, the swimming, the surfing. Visitors got to pay for a, a, a park pass. Um, so bottom line is you can go to the beach. You cannot picnic. You cannot hang out. You can go to the beach to exercise, swim, surf, etc. So you cannot go hang out and lounge at the beach, which you see all the pictures on Facebook. All these tourists hanging out, sunbathing, cannot. That is not allowed. And locals, okay. locals too, cannot. Question. Yeah. With something as in a tall order as that, who does the enforcement to check? I mean, you see somebody lying down. Are they banking on the fact that uh, citizens patrol will make that call as a hey, violation 107, uh, people sunbathing on the beach? Can you respond? Yeah. You know, yeah. who, who's going to yeah. do that? In that case, you would call the police line to report that. Again, you know, is that where we want our police to be? Absolutely not. Uh, you would hope that DLNR is patrolling the beaches. You would hope that the park rangers are patrolling the parks. But if it's that much of a burn, I, you know, I got to tell you, um, police officers have discretion. They're also very busy. So, you know, if you see a guy laying on a beach someplace, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's your call. I, I personally wouldn't call the police to go tell a guy he cannot uh, lie on a beach. But if I saw eight or 10 people hanging out at the beach with a fire cooking out, I, I would definitely call the police um, mm -hmm. because they're not practicing social distancing and they're totally violating more than one rule. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's just, you know, it's your call. But again, keep in mind, police officers are very busy, especially right now, especially right now. So uh, have some consideration for that, but just, the reason I'm doing this is I don't want you folks calling the police to ask these questions. Can I go to the beach and swim? Or uh, this is really to, to hopefully this will get out to enough people where if you have a question, you, you know, you, you'll know the answer. Okay. Vehicle maintenance. Can I bring my car to the mechanic? Boy, that, that's, I, I would, okay. First of all, I would have to assume if whether or not a mechanic is an essential service that's provided. And it is, it is just okay. Then it's not I would a say, question, but it is. So then I would say yes, you can bring your car. You're smart, because you're, bro. You're, yeah, because you know one plus one is three. I knew that all along, bro. I knew that all along. 
Having your vehicle repaired is allowed as long as you practice social distancing and avoid going out if you're feeling sick. So that's kind of the, the that's kind of the standard response. Yeah, if it's essential, yes, you're allowed to go. Um, now remember, essential was auto mechanics repair shops. It did not include auto body. So if you got to go patch and paint your car, you got to wait till this thing is over. Since the DMV is closed, how can I renew my vehicle registration? And what if it is expired? Ooh, okay. I, I don't know if any um, grandfather rule is in place to uh, uh, grant, you know, if you go over the expiration date that I honestly, I don't know. I believe the kiosks are still in place, right? Over yes. at the uh, Safeway. Correct. As long as you practice social distancing, and there's nobody around you when you do that, or if there is, you're hoping. I see most places what they do is if they have a kiosk set up, I notice that they actually measure off and they put even even at the CVS Longs, um, yeah, Longs Drugs. When you're going up to the window, they'll actually have this yellow line for you for privacy. Stand at that line until the person clears the counter. So I like that. I like that. I think as long as you're not colorblind, I I like that. So you can, the county will be accepting payments through the drop box window located to the right of the glass doors at the Kapuli building. So where you normally would go right to the right of that, there's a drop box. And the, and the mail will still be processed timely. The Safeway kiosks remain open, as well as the online payment methods for sewer and vehicle registration, both of which are free for public use. Now, I'm assuming they're waiving um, because normally when you go online and pay, they, there's a surcharge. This one is saying it's free, so they may have taking out the uh it sounds like it sounds like yeah, it. motor vehicle registration also accepted at online they didn't what about the expiration date yeah the they expiration. didn't have a question they didn't answer that question okay as far as if it's late if, if it's expired well if you're going to do everything online you know because sometimes it says to show proof of a safety check if you do it by a certain time right yes but if you're going to a kiosk how can you accomplish that method it's based on the time that you actually do it at the kiosk wow. or based on the time okay. that you actually do it online. Uh, okay. the, the important thing is when you go to the kiosk, well, obviously you get that thing will print out. If you do it online, you make sure you print that uh, receipt that you get and take, put that in a car. So if you get stopped, you get to show the police officer that hey, I did it. I just didn't get the, the sticker yep. yet. Wow. Uh, but you know, they, didn't, they, they didn't answer the question about the, uh, if you're, Registration is expired. I don't know. I apologize, but um, I can't. I can't answer that because, uh, you know, all my life I've been taking handy van, so I I don't have my own car. So. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Here we go. Okay. This is not a good one. Essential work. Yes. Is there a is there a permit for essential workers? I am an essential worker. What are the rules during curfew hours? Let me just say because it's not fair. It's a not fair question. No permits are being issued at this time for right. essential work. So let me just say, it says, please have your employer type up a form stating that your company is an essential business, your current job assignment and the areas of quiet that you have to perform essential work. During curfew hours, you are able to travel to and from work. Plain, well, plain you, and simple. My understanding, I mean, I've, I've had several, you know, I have, uh, have a large security firm that we do have, um, you know, accounts, across the entire island. I do have accounts where uh, we do plainclothes patrols to make checks on certain things. So they're not in a marked vehicle per se. Um, my employees, they carry their company badges and they also carry my business card that should they get stopped, the, the officer can call me to validate or verify. I mean, that's the route I go. And we've, we've hadn't had any problems yet. Okay, just understand that if you're essential, um, I think what's happening is, I was talking to one of the police officers today and they'd stopped a bunch of cars, uh, but only a few have, have uh, notes from their employers. So if you're essential, if you're working in an essential position and you're required to go to work, just have your boss give you a little note that you can, when the officers stop you, uh, you can show it to the officer. We have a lot of people abusing the stay at home. There are a lot of people running around saying that they're going to the beach and they're actually gallivanting all around. 
And we're going to talk about that in the end, Charlie. Remind me about the, yep. the remedy okay. for that. Okay. okay, I'm a landscaper and can I go to work? Good question. Nope. <laughs> Did you get a copy of this, Charles? Nope. I okay, just, I, um, think... I think it was brought out, the mayor okay. uh, was posed with that question. So I think he, he addressed it. And I mean, you know, there's not too many things I remember, but yeah. I remembered that one. Well, interesting. I got a call today from a, uh, a person that had the same question. She, and it was interesting. She said, I watched the, well, I saw the thing yesterday when you hit the mayor and I heard the mayor say that landscaping was not essential. But I, so-and-so just got a letter from the National Association of Landscaping Professionals. And we had a letter from them saying that, no, 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 our job is essential. And I told the person, sorry, see, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a declaration, emergency declaration, which is what we're in, the mayor makes the call, not the National Association of Landscaping Professionals. Those guys are there to lobby to protect their, uh, their professionals. On Kauai, landscaping has been uh, ruled as non-essential. If your landscaping is, uh, um, Essential per the emergency rule involves emergency related activities like cleaning out fallen trees or other public safety uh, jobs, then, then you can, but until, until that, nope, none of that. <coughs> My neighbors have construction workers and gardeners on their property, is that allowed? Nope. <laughs> Building construction is not allowed, <laughs> including new home construction and renovations unless work performed supports COVID-19 pandemic response, affordable housing, healthcare facilities, etc. Regular lawn care and maintenance is considered non-essential and not allowed. New construction, residential or commercial, is not allowed. I had a complaint today at a courtyard at Mar a Marriott or whatever, the Sheraton. They're doing renovations. So I got a complaint. I got some pictures. I sent it in to the to the EOC today to to the chief of staff, and they were going to go send out the construction maintenance or uh, enforcement crew. You cannot do renovations. You can only do emergency repairs <clears throat> to your property. I, so I, I food would assume. I would assume. So that means, just for clarification, for people like me, that. Emergency would be uh, a falling tree, make them puka in my roof. I can I can get on it right away because number right. one, safety. Number two, you know, like have rain coming out, shoot it rain. That that type of thing. It's done. It's allowed, exactly. right? Okay. Yeah. Broken pipes, uh, electrical, um, mm -hmm. your toilet broke, <clears throat> things like that. But renovations, no, no. And um, so I, I I'm curious. I'm gonna follow up tomorrow and see. But what you're is, you know, you, renovation, but emergency, like you're building another room because your mother-in-law is just driving you crazy. So you like put her on the opposite end of the house. That's on, wouldn't that be an emergency? No, 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 no. Okay, okay. I, I tried. I tried, folks, in TV yeah, land. I, I tried. I deliver food to the farmer's markets and other establishments. Is this essential business? I would have to say yes. And you would be correct. Selling baked goods, <laughs> produce is allowed. Just remember to maintain social distancing. Thank you. Even Patsy got that. Yay. She's actually paying attention. All right. Oh, Patsy's going to bake, taking orders. How was the oh, holly brownie? Non, oh, perfect. But here's the problem with those brownies, you eliminate social distancing because everybody going to get together like eat the brownies. So, you know, it's a yin and a yang right now <laughs> we're talking about. All right, all right. Um, I'm a landscaper and a tree fell in my client's yard. Can I take care of it? If it's deemed an emergency, if it's in a part of the yard that wouldn't cause any emergency to like break a pipe or say break the wall, I, I, I would say you would have to leave it there until this is over. Yes, if in the interest of the homeowner and public safety. So yeah. kind of exactly what you said. In the interest of a homeowner and public safety, um, the tree should be removed. Yes. Regular lawn care and maintenance is considered non-essential. 
I own a cleaning business. Can I check on empty houses for my clients since no one will be staying in them for a few weeks? I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say, if it's security related, I would say yes. Other than that, no. Well, Patsy said no. You said yes, but for security purposes, the answer is yes. This is kind of bizarre. <laughs> Only, wait, it does, no, only to check for potential leaks, not security. Well, well I, I consider a leak like a breach, right? Yeah. And a breach, re, breach could be security matter. And the reason why I think I know that answer is because all the rules you're reading, I wrote it up. They came to me <laughs> to write it up. <laughs> Bottom line is no. if you're going to go there to check for potential leaks, I guess the leak could be in your security. Yep. Can I sell fish on the side of the road? Yeah, only on Kauai. As long, yes, as it, long. Yeah, only on Kauai. As long as you keep your social distance, distancing. Am I correct? Well, let me read it. Yes, as long as you maintain social distancing. <laughs> I feel like I'm game show host, man. Okay, I always here wanted to be on what? Jeopardy. Yeah, I always want to be. Oh, oh yeah, these questions I could handle, but not the kind on Jeopardy. Jeez. Yeah, like Please. like uh, yeah, yeah. You know, you know the kind. You know, Jeopardy. Sometimes you know, I answer them. They say, "Okay, uh, what is the the third plate under the the sun?" You know, that kind. Like, oh, okay, sorry, I don't want to play no more. <laughs> in, in 1462, like really? Okay, what kind of construction is considered essential and what is non-essential? Kind of answered it earlier, but yeah, the construction that relates to uh, safety of the structure is and that is and is required to maintain the, the stability of the structure. I would say that because it falls in the realm of safety, yes. But if what you're going to do is basically some type of remodeling, no, you, you covered that already. So construction of affordable housing units is considered essential. Repair work performed by plumbers, roofers, and electricians for necessary repairs on homes and essential businesses is allowed. All other construction that does not support COVID-19 recovery efforts is considered non-essential, including new home construction that is not affordable. I know a lot of people are questioning that. Um, I got to say that, you know, is the way Derek, the mayor, explained it yesterday. The faster we get these affordable housing units up, the faster we get people out of the crowding situations that currently two families, three families living in. That was his justification. Okay. Let me Grocery. let me ask you something real. Let me yes. ask you something really fast. Just came to mind. Yeah. Okay, we're talking about construction. Yes. But then you have some sub work that pertains to this construction, like roofing. Because someone asked me the other day, hey, what about roofers? Because that safety, you know, leaks and stuff like that, can they, and, and they're already in the process of stripping everything down. Can they go and, can roofers work? I mean, that's. If, yeah, obviously, if, if your roof is leaking, then yes, they can. Yeah. If your roof is leaking, yes, they can. Okay. But if you, if you're, if you were halfway through, uh, like you're building your, you get your frame up and you're ready to put the roof, that, that, no. that's not okay. No, no. Okay. Grocery shopping category is grocery shopping yeah. for, okay. Grocery... Gro okay grocery shopping for 200 please okay some grocery <laughs> shop uh, some grocery stores are letting fifth in 50 people at a time is that too many as long as it's possible to maintain social distancing with that 50 if you allow 50 people into one 400 square foot facility the answer is no because there's no way you gonna fit fifty people in there? Am I correct? Well, it depends on the size of the building. Patsy had it correct. I don't know if you can hear Patsy from there, but she said based on the square footage. If you go to Rule Five, Update One in the mayor, if you go to kawaiigovernor forward slash COVID hyphen nineteen, get all of the rules, every single one, and the amendments. Um, but it's based on the square footage. So on the larger stores, uh, yeah. 50 are allowed in the smaller stores? No, they're not. So based on the size of the store, um, is that too many? Depending on the size, it's 50 and 7-Eleven right now is not allowed. 
in those mm -hmm. little 7-11s. Uh, 50 in Walmart is. I, I don't know what the number is. I should have printed that out, but um, it is the, the way it's structured is to allow for social distancing without any problem. So yes, sometimes when you get to Costco or you get to Walmart, you're going to have to wait because they have the maximum number of people inside. Don't complain. You should be home anyway. But if you're out there, you go wait in line, that's fine. But that is, that is the deal. Can I go shopping for food? Can I pick up my friend with no car and take them shopping for food with me? Try to repeat that again. Can I go shopping for food is the first question. Yeah. Patsy said yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> Can I pick up my friend with no car and take them shopping for food with me? I would say no. Is that you, your you, final answer? You want to call a friend? No, no, no. I, 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 I think to be safe, I would ask a friend, what do you want? I'll go and buy it, bring it back, drop it off. Because then that's that's the question that was posed with this one per household. You know, how do you differentiate when you get two people in a car? You you won't get into that problem. So I said, hey, if you're only telling me you see one head in a car, then you shouldn't get pulled over, right? You get two heads right. in a car, yeah. It gives me reason to ask you where the hell are you think, going. On one of the updates on the rules, I think they changed the requirement to a recommended. But bottom line is this: you can go shopping for food, obviously. And you can pick up your friend as long as neither of one of you are sick and you practice social distancing. But within sick, a car, but within a car, how, how, how do you accomplish that now? Of that six I, I don't people? know. I don't know. I mean, you see, like, that's 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 where now they put out these rules, and, and I'm sorry, but then people go start nitpicking because you know we constantly tell them six feet, six feet. We know that even if you sit in the back seat, it's not six feet. So I, I don't know why they even allow that because now it's going to get real nitpicky already. Yeah, well, that's... that's Okay. You're, 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 you're the game host and I'm just a contestant. Well, I know. Okay. Remember now, remember these questions are the questions that are being asked of our Kauai Police Department dispatchers. So I think you can understand why they came out with this to clear up yeah. the air so that we're not bothering our dispatchers. Um, yep. Uh, they put the same question again. Can I still shop for groceries? Absolutely. Uh, and medication, of course. As long as you practice. Safe distancing. Social, Social distancing. Yes. Keiki, can I pick up my children's schoolwork packets without a driver's license? Parents need to work with a DOE, their child's teacher, and other parents for assistance in picking up and delivering schoolwork. Common sense. Can I still visit DOE feeding sites to pick up food for my children? Yes, this is an essential activity. Yes. Yeah, you have to go with the child. That's the DOE rule. Now, you know, for every rule, um, situation, circum, you know this, Charlie, being a cop, every, every situation is different and every circumstance is different. So yes. if, if your circumstance is different, and uh, you may have a, a disabled child that for whatever reason, you couldn't get in the car to go to the arrange, work that with the DOE, work that with the school, work that with the principal. Uh, I think, you know, I think uh, people are reasonable people. So, but the bottom line is the question was really pertaining to, are you allowed to go? Yes, you are allowed to go with your child to pick up their meal from the DOE facility. Okay, moving. This is the moving uh, category. I'm moving homes. Can I still move and pass through KPD checkpoints? Moving homes for? Yeah, you're like, you're moving homes. You are decided to move in the middle of a COVID-19 crisis. So you mean uh, you're moving the home itself? Like? No, no. no you're moving. Just, oh, you're moving. Yeah. I, I, you know, I think you should be allowed if you, if you got no choice. If, you, if <laughs> yeah. wherever you're living now, you get you're getting tossed out. Of course. I mean, yeah. what are you gonna? And do? I'm not sure. I mean, I, I don't know if it's an eviction. Again, it's just the bottom line is essential, right? If you're moving houses, yeah. you cannot move unless you leave the house. So the answer is yes. Can moving companies have their customers pick up freight? No. You know, I'm looking into the question a little bit too hard. I, I got to No, you're that. not. Charlie, you're exactly right. I'm just wondering how. I would have said, yeah. But the no, answer because is no. The reason why is not everybody gets CDL. 
not, not everybody's a forklift operator. That's how I was looking at it. Oh, really? Especially no, when you no, say it, you could pick up freight. Yeah, yeah the, 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 the answer is no, because personal furniture for homes is non essential. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? So you're good, Charlie. Amazing. Thank you, okay. Alex. Thank you, Alex. Well, we only Thank get you. a few more. Patsy's on a roll. Patsy's on a roll, too. Healthcare for 200. Healthcare. Yeah. I haven't. <laughs> Remember, these are questions, real questions that are constantly being asked of our dispatchers. Okay. I have an appointment at Wilcox at Kauai Medical Clinic. Can I still go? Yes, yes. But practice. Social distancing. Patsy's on a roll, Patsy's on a roll. Call ahead and notify your doctor. Yes. Um, and make sure, because you know, you know, one of the things they're using now is this telehealth, e-visits, uh, when I was sick a couple of weeks ago, I, I called my doctor. She says, Mel, just use the e-visit. I went online. You go through a complete Simple. questionnaire. Simple. Unbelievable. And, um, and, and she, 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 you know, at, I guess during the day she takes breaks and then she goes through all her e-visits, prescribe the medication straight to the pharmacy. I never had to go to the doctor's office. So call your doctor at a time. If it can be done through telehealth, do it through telehealth. The good thing about telehealth if you have medical, well, you, you should have medical. There's no copay. There's no copay during this program. So if you can, obviously, if you're sick and really puking and all of that, no, you got to go in. But um, definitely, if you have the symptoms of uh, COVID. But HMSA, normal... yeah. you know, HMSC, I don't know if you saw, but that's that's what they're recommending. I know Kaiser has where they you go you, you go live like how we're doing now with yeah, the doctor know... and patient. <laughs> Yeah, I know HMSA has that. They actually yeah. have where you can you be like this. Um, yeah, you're saying Kaiser has it too. Yep. Yep. So that so, mine yeah. was just the e visit. I didn't go to the meeting with the doctor. The good thing oh. is every time I go to a doctor, I go to Doctor King. Every time I go Doctor King, even if it's for a physical, for a checkup, she always telling me I gotta lose weight. I went e visit. She never <laughs> told me I had to lose weight. So from now on, it's all e visit for me. I'm not gonna go see her anymore. Hey, you know, okay. I, and, and plus, um, you know, Stephanie, uh, Stephanie had asked me what I was doing. I was, I was sitting on my iPad and she told me, what are you doing? I said, the doctor visit. She goes, you sit on your, get off your, I said, no, I, I'm having a colonoscopy right now. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> I hope the camera was off. <laughs> All right. Can someone drop me off at my medical appointment with it while they go grocery shopping? Yes. As long as, as, long as social dis, social yeah. distancing. And if you're sick, no, stay away. Stay there yep. we go. There you go. Can I pick up medicine? Yes, you can. As long as you practice social distancing. Okay, solid waste disposal for four hundred. Can I go oh. to the dump? Yeah. Yes. As long as you practice social distancing and avoid and avoid going out if you're sick. However, please remember only disposal of solid waste items resulting from essential activity in observance of emergency emergency rule number five is allowed. Well, I tell you what, if you got auto opala in the house, it's gonna get to an essential emergency. So Correct. yeah. Correct. Yep. And um, what they're saying is that the non-essential jobs, no essential obviously your house but i did i i yesterday i saw that all of the uh transfer stations are only essential visits are allowed so kpd checkpoints kpd checkpoints this is the last question charles what are the rules at the checkpoints i'm just going to read this because i think that's way too broad well the, to me i was let, let me take a stab at it go ahead the go rules ahead. Uh, the rules is real simple you see flashing lights, you see police officers, you obey the rules, and you stop where they tell you to stop. They will come at a checkpoint, as in any other checkpoint. They can do any checks. Well, this one is because it's meant, I guess they have a mandate to check in or do enforcement, right? And they can ask you questions like if you're going to work, come in from work, you know, that, that kind of thing at a checkpoint. Is that correct? Correct. It just summarizes this answer. Just summarizes again why you can be on the road, why you sh you know, and why you cannot be on the road. Obviously, going shopping, picking up your medicine, going to the doctor, 
um, going to the beach. The problem, what, what, like we talked about, and I posted today, stop the loopholes, stop the loopholes. You know, you guys go out and cruising, police, you come to the checkpoint and automatically, and I've seen this posted several times by several people saying, hey, if you get stopped by the police, just tell them you're going to the beach. And, um, and we know you're not going to the beach. We know that you're out cruising and we know that you're, I say, gallivanting. Um, I told the officer, I would follow the guy, right? You know, if the guy, if I was in a roadblock, I was an officer and the guy said, I, oh, no, officer, I'm going to the beach. Perfect. I'll follow you. And I'll follow mm -hmm. him to the beach and make sure he jump in the water. Even if he get his jeans on, I don't care. You went in the water. You told me you went to the beach. Let's go to the beach. A lot of people are not um, staying at home. A lot of people, and it's hard to stay at home all day long. We all know that. So they, they, they go out, whether they're going to their friend's house or they're going to go check the surf. That stuff's not allowed. You can go to the beach to go swim. You can go yes. to the beach to go exercise. You cannot go to the beach to go check the water. You cannot go to the beach to go take pictures of the sunrise and the sunset. That, that stuff just doesn't work. So, and again, you know, it all comes back to the message that we're trying to put out, Charlie. And we've yep. been doing this, we've been doing this quite a bit. And, religiously. Um, maybe, we've been doing this and maybe the religiously. message, you know, maybe the message is being heard by some. I know that. As we post now, I see more supportive posts, more people jumping on saying, yes, you guys stay home. You don't have to go out. And more and more people are understanding the, the, the severity and the danger of this virus. So, mm -hmm. oh, here, let me just, I forgot. No sightseeing or cruising is allowed, including motorcycle joy rides. Um, and and that's, that's kind of the last point that was trying to make. So again, let's in summary, those were the questions that the Kauai police dispatchers are saying are the most common. And you don't need to call 241-1711. Understand, you cannot leave your house unless for essential. Essential means go, picking up food, going to the doctor, going to work, going to exercise, or going to the beach. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you stay home. Other than that, you stay home. No more joyriding, no more cruising. It's, that's out of the question. And we got to all listen to that. And, um, and that's the problem the police officers are having because you can't enforce it. The guy say, I'm going to the beach. I'm going to the golf course. You got to let them go. And that person is going around spreading the aloha and possibly spreading the COVID-19 virus. And that's what we got to stop. That's what we got to stop. But we've been no. trying to Charles. We've been trying. As like I said, a lot of people now jumping on, on the posts and, um, and uh, understanding that this is, is going to get worse before it gets better. You see the number. We're over 200. We'll be over 500 shortly. And we're no doubt going to have more cases here on Kauai. We, we've yes. been holding our own. We've been holding our own, which means a lot of people are following the rules. But we also have a bunch of tests that are, are being processed right now. And I ask God to please have them all come back negative. Have them all come back negative. But when you look at the trends across the country, you know, the, the, the odds are against us. Uh, and that's why we got to work extra hard, extra hard. You know, Mel, I wanted to say one thing. Um, before we go on to the next subject, you know, it's about the roadblocks. You being a police officer, I being a police officer, back in the old days, you know, roadblocks was roadblocks, was roadblocks right? Usually you associate with you folks out there, DUI roadblocks. But if you, if you hear me, please do me a favor. You see one of these roadblocks and you are driving in the opposite direction, not in the direction that the vehicles are being stopped. Because a lot of times they'll be on the highway, they'll be stopping vehicles coming into the town, and you'll be on a road that's going out of the town. We have that move over rule now, and I, be I believe it's a statewide rule. It was implemented because of the deaths of you know police officers on Oahu, that you know they do traffic stops, and people come zipping by and they hit them. So please be mindful if you see these roadblocks, create a buffer zone and move over because the slightest deviation as you're pulling through that section of roadway, all you need to do, because remember now, the officers are checking the cars and they'll back, their backs will be towards you. If you're not careful and you jerk the wheel to the left, there'll be a likelihood that you, you'll, run, you'll run into them, okay? Remember, they're there to protect us. They're not there to be a statistic. So like today, when I was delivering the food on the other side, I went by a roadblock today. And the people in front of us, they were just blowing past that without even thinking about moving over. 
And let me tell you, they came pretty close to those cones. And all they had to do is take one, one slip up because what happens once you kill a person, it's not like a yo-yo where you can pull the string back and you can call that car back or you can call that uh, impact back. It, it won't happen. So I hope your, your listeners out there, Mel, the listeners out there, take that, take that advice, please. Give space, move over. Thank you, Mel. No, thank you, Charlie. I know we get 49 people live right now, and we're going to right on. We'll be wrapping right up in a couple of minutes, and we're going to put this on, on uh, Facebook, so hopefully this message gets out. But we're going to just wrap up real quick. Um, again, people, I know you guys are sick and tired of hearing it, I and mean, you're sick and tired of hearing it from everybody. I remember when this all first started, I was really irritated every time I heard the term social distancing. I was so, Patsy will tell you, like I'm sick of hearing that term already. That was when I didn't realize how bad this virus was. Now I understand why social distancing is so important. You see, a lot of people complaining about the flights, a lot of people complaining about the tourists, a lot of people complaining about everybody else. These are the same people that are driving on the highways, going down to the beaches, hanging around with their friends, sucking them up in the garages, and complaining about the tourists. You see, the tourists are all leaving. Very few people coming in. I think today we had two came into Kauai. More people left. Um, the governor today just <clears throat> enacted the quarantine on all uh, crew members from the airlines, as well as inner island passengers. So we're we, we running out of people to blame people. I guess this is my point. It's up to us. It's up to you and it's up to me to go out there and practice this social distancing. If we do that, and we're not out, un, out there unnecessarily touching things and playing with things, uh, you're pretty safe. But if we don't get that message out and people are still hanging out, I see the pictures, trust me. I get messages from people all over this island sending me pictures of parties and hanging people hanging out. Um, and and if, if we continue to allow that to happen or we, we don't stop that, then our numbers are going to climb dramatically. And I don't know how else to get that point across. Uh, you know, Charlie, we joked about in the beginning that if we cannot flatten the curve by being responsible and disciplined, then then trials, we, we're going to flatten the curve. Um, we, we're going to flatten the curve by playing some flat music. Some... So we can flatten the curve that way, yeah. or we can flatten the curve by being disciplined. The other thing, Charles, why don't you tell them about the plan that we're going to seek to get deputized here as official uh, official COVID-19 enforcement. Uh, uh, enforcement officers. And, and Charlie, let them know how this is going to work. Well, first of all, we are, we, we are seeking to be deputized to give the power and we will be driving around and you know, you know, if it works, we'll we'll be allowed to drive around. And if we see anyone that fits the criteria that maybe the they're taking advantage or abusing, we will stop that vehicle. And then upon stopping that vehicle, we will also we we will have options, discretionary options, where we can give a warning, we can give a citation. Um you know, even jail time. But we figured, you know, they, so far they never learned nothing, the ones who's abusing it right now. You're in jail, $5,000 fine, not stopping them, Charles. It ain't stopping them. Yeah, so we, Mel and I came up with something that I think, we think it's gonna work. The violators will have to spend 24 hours with Mel and Charlie. <laughs> that, yeah. that is going to stop them. I think Charlie. Yeah. You know, I I, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> you know, well, I, I spend a lot of time with Charlie on the phone <laughs> every day. And if, if somebody told me, Mel, if you do that again, you're going to have to spend 24 hours with Charlie. I would never do it again. I would never do it again. <laughs> if you have to spend no, time with I tell you, I, I learned this technique when, uh, as a police officer when I was at the FBI Academy. And um, I will sing to that person 
if it's in the key of G, I will purposely sing to that person in the key of J. And they will probably end up telling you and me, no, I give you my life savings, not for reading. Stop, Charlie. <laughs> you know, we, we make fun. We laugh so much throughout the day because, uh, you know, I, I think this is from a law enforcement cops. I think we just, we, we build differently, but the bottom line is we really trying to, trying to get this message out. We're blessed to have a good following on Facebook and hopefully YouTube. I don't know. Again, thank you for coming on and taking that challenge. I, I, I can't believe we're getting it to work, but we're hoping that our message gets out. We're hoping that the people understand Charlie's brother, not doing too well in New York. I mean, he told his story, go to his page and you can, and, and see the videos. Um, this stuff is real. This stuff is real. We've got two young kids, not kids, but we've got two young uh, males on life support right now in Oahu. Everybody thought it was old people. We got two young people uh, on life support. The only two people on life support on ventilators in Hawaii is two younger, healthy men. So <clears throat> it's not about being old. It's not about being sick. This thing doesn't discriminate. We just got to practice the rules. We got to follow the rules and <clears throat> we got to take it upon ourselves. We got to make sure our kids are following the rules. And uh, we, we got to seriously, we got to get a handle on this or uh, we, we're going to see some nasty repercussions. So, well, let me, let me share one last thing. I put a post, I saw it, and I immediately, I literally had a PTSD moment. This is from one of the hospitals in New York where they actually rolled out a refrigerated trailer that's used as a temporary morgue because they had that many bodies to roll in there. Uh, in 19, I believe it was 1998, I was part of a federal team that responded to Guam after the crash of Korean Airlines. It was a 747. I can remember so vividly, vividly how many bodies were there that we had to process. And just imagine uh, the people that came in from South Korea to identify their loved ones. They have a system over there where they actually everyone has a dental impression. And through an interpreter, they was giving us information because we had a manifest of where each person was sitting. But as you can imagine that when the, 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 the jet crashed, you know, the bodies are not gonna be where it's supposed to be. So we were literally piecing the situation together like a puzzle. I'm saying this because I had firsthand, I know what mass death looks like. 180 plus bodies at any given time, one time. When I saw that thinking, what well, they must be going over in New York on how they're removing these bodies. I don't ever want that here because we do not have the capacity should we have a, a breakout because People don't want to practice social distancing. If that ever happens, I don't know what we're going to do. And I'm going to tell you firsthand, and if you want to challenge me on it, I got the records to show it. You're not going to like that situation. And I'm sorry that I got to talk harsh like that, but that's the reality. Should we not practice what you've been talking about tonight, Mel? Social distancing, because they found that as long as you stay out of the range, you can't get contaminated, right? And at the same token, if you don't go near LA, touch everything under the sun and then touch your face, you shouldn't get contaminated. And so that's why I tell you folks, Mel and I, we have this compassion and you know, we talked about it today, right Mel? We're, we're almost at the point of just giving up because you say, you know, what is it gonna take for you folks to out there who wants to circumvent the system? I said, hey, I'm just as angry as you but I want this thing to be over. And I know if it takes <coughs> sacrificing now so we can speed up the process for it to be over, then that's what I'm gonna do. And all we're asking you is to do the same. All we're asking you to do the same. Back to you, my brother, back to you. It's just, it's just you know, it's not like we're being asked to do a hundred push-ups and a hundred sit-ups every day or go run five miles a day. You know, this isn't a military boot camp. They're asking you to stay at home. They're asking you to practice social distancing. They're asking you to wash your hands. 
They're asking you to don't touch your face. They're asking you simple things that if we do these simple things for a short period of time, we'll get, we'll get on the other side of this curve and we'll be able to get back to some sort of normalcy. That's all they're asking. That's all they're demanding. And that's all we asking. I have absolutely no authority to tell you to do, what, to do anything. But I do have the ability to ask you, all of you, to just, just do what we're supposed to do so we can all get to the other side and start the recovery process. So I know we've been on here for a while. I appreciate you guys coming on to YouTube. We'll put this on Facebook, but we're gonna hope, hope Facebook gets their crap together. I'm kind of bummed out, but because I cannot see questions or anything like that. Uh, but we'll do it again. We're going to do this every night, folks. Every night we're going to come on. It won't be this long. Every night we'll be on 15, 20 minutes just to let everybody know to stay at home, wash your hands, don't touch your face, do everything that you got to do, practice social distancing. Because I think if you hear it enough, either you're going to get sick and tired of us and not watch us anymore, but it's going to stay there. And you're going to remember. Love you guys. Charlie, love you, my brother. Same here, my brother. We'll see you guys tomorrow night on Facebook Live or or YouTube live, one of the two. You guys all take care. God bless. And hey, let's all do this together, people. Let's all do this together. God bless.